Hey everybody, last week we read the first half of this book um, about this little girl from G's Bend, Alabama, who is learning from her grandmother how to sew a quilt. The second half of this book talks about a little bit more about the history of the people who live there, um, talks about the civil rights movement and things like that. So here we go. It says progress. Once the river ran free, remember that there was a river that goes all around G's Bend, that's where the river bends. Once the river ran free, then they built the dam and said it was progress. Acres and acres of rich farmland known as the bottom are flooded now. So they built a dam um, to help make energy. That's usually why a dam is built, but it really affected their lives. Land where black men and women named Petway and Bennett grew cotton before the Civil War for no pay, where sharecroppers named M Mingo and Williams worked the soil for very little pay, and where black farmers named Bendoff, Young, and Irby scratched out a living for slow pay. Now, cotton mouths, that's a kind of a snake, alligators and catfish live in the bottom. Call that progress? Colors. Grandma says blue cools. Red is loud and hard to control like fire and a gossiping tongue. Green oozes. Orange laughs. Pink smiles. Yellow warms. Black protects. White shifts its shades from soft and bright to dingy. Purple is quiet. Lavender is sweet smelling like a newborn baby. Brown is hard working. Grandma says, colors show you how you feel deep down inside. I feel yellow right now with a hint of orange. Stereotypes. I haven't been able to work on my quilt for two weeks. My cousin Ashlyn's been visiting from New York City. She left this morning. Yes, I'll miss her, maybe. Ashlyn thinks she's as cool as blue. She reminds me of a duck, calm on the surface, but paddling like crazy underneath to stay afloat. The idea of making a quilt was way too country for Ashlyn. I'd rather paint or write a poem, she said. Quilting is painting a poem with fabric, I told her. Never mind. We still did what she wanted to. TV, cell phones, CD players, video games, and a laptop computer with internet hookup. She was so surprised we have these things. I was surprised she thought we didn't. A lot of people from cities think that people in the country don't have anything, and she was really offended that her cousin thought she didn't have any internet or anything like that. Pinky. Back in the 1960s, Mr. Willie Quill broke horses. That means he trained horses for the Alabama State Mounted Patrol. Fine horses, well-trained. Mr. Willie Quill knew his horses. He knew Jimmy Lee Jackson too, a young man from Marion who was shot because he wanted to vote. We decided to protest the senseless killing by marching from Selma to the Capitol in Montgomery, remembers Mr. Willie Quill. The 54 mile march began in Selma at the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Remember John Lewis who passed away somewhat recently, he led everybody on that march. And this man went on that march too. 600 of us stood on the bridge ready to march, but the governor said, no, we couldn't. We walked anyway. Midway the bridge, the mounted troopers on horses attacked. And remember those are the horses that this man, Mr. Willie Quill trained. So he knew all of the horses. He said, I remember seeing those horses that the troopers were on heading straight to us. We held our hands and prayed. Beating hooves pound against the blacktop and nightsticks hum as the troopers swing them like lassos. Mr. Willie Quill braces for death, but not today, not Bloody Sunday. Mercifully, he sees one of his horses. I throw up my arm and I hollered, Pinky! The horse broke stride and moved away, allowing Mr. Willie Quill to live to tell the story. Mr. Willie Quill trained horses for the Alabama State Mounted Patrol. Fine horses, well-trained. Ask anybody. Mr. Willie Quill knew his horses. Thank goodness Pinky knew him. 
Dr. King Brings Hope. I stitch a patch of bright pink to remember Pinky's story. Next to it, so let's see, hold on, let me find this picture. The patch of pink to remember Pinky's story. This is the finished quilt. There's the pink to remember the story. I stitch a patch of bright pink to remember Pinky's story. Next to it, I sew a spotless white patch for the hope Dr. Martin Luther King brought to the bend. I've only read about Dr. King. Grandma saw him, heard him, marched with him. On a stormy February night in 1965, Dr. King spoke at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. Grandma, with Mama in her arms, was among the first to arrive. Every pew was soon filled. People stood, some people stood outside in the rain. With misty eyes, Grandma says, the words we have heard that night changed our lives. Peace, hope, justice, equality, truth, love, freedom. I would have followed him anywhere. And she did. The right to vote. Folks from G's Bend crossed the river to Camden, Alabama to register to vote. Remember how G's Bend, right? The river curves like this and it's hard to get anywhere, but Camden is the, the main city in the county and that's where they had to go to vote. They had to cross the river to get there. So they had to cross the river to get there. And the next week, after they registered to vote, they shut down the ferry. The ferry is the only way to get across the river. So as soon as all these black people started registering to vote, the ferry got shut down. Although the ferry is finally open today, it wasn't then. The official reason was there was no money to keep it running. Grandma remembers that time. Sure as I tell you, it was done to keep us from voting. Instead of 20 minute, a 20 minute ferry ride, the only way to get from G's Bend to Camden to vote was to make the 50 mile trip by car or walk. I would have crawled to vote. Grandma's voice is strong and I believe her. What changed? In 1971, the all black school was closed in G's Bend. Black students were bused to an all white school 50 miles away. Then the white students all left and went to private schools. Today, the once all white school is now mostly black. So what changed? Grandma votes no matter what. I go to school no matter where. Determination is rooted in our family tree and that has not changed. By and by, how many times have I heard the women sing and cry and comfort each other while quilting and remembering? So I sing too. I stitch a patch of golden thank yous for James Reeb, a young Boston preacher who was killed by believe, for believing in justice. In the background, I hear grandma's voice softly singing when the morning comes. A bright blue piece of velvet for Viola Liz, uh, Luizzo, a Detroit housewife who also came to G's Bend to help with the big march. Brave Viola, wife, mother, friend, an American hero, assassinated because she believes in justice and freedom. We will really understand it. Will we really understand it better by and by? I will mourn in a big plaid people circle of white, black, brown, yellow, and red for Reverend King, who was shot on that awful April day in Memphis in 1968, they say. But will we ever understand it by and by? Grandma always said that darkness must have its hour, but morning always comes. Until then, we must tell the story of how we've overcome so we'll understand it better by and by. The Sewing Bee. G's Bend quilters were discovered again in the 1960s and the Freedom Quilting Bee was formed to make and sell quilts. Orders came all the way from New York City. Were you part of the bee, Gray Grand? She closes her eyes and thinks before speaking. Each quilt meant a job, some money, a possible way out of poverty. My children profited from it but with the orders also came strict rules. Not a stitch could be out of place. Only traditional designs could be used, not my own designs. A nine patch, a wedding ring design, a bear claw design. Any variations were rejected. 
Yes, more money, less freedom. I chose to stay free. My Way with Corduroy. Come the 1970s, the Freedom Quilting Bee began to fill orders for Sears Roebuck. You know, Sears, I think they closed, but it's kind of like uh, Macy's, right? So a place like Macy's was ordering their quilts. Lots of corduroy was sent to G's Bend from Alabama textile mills. Big bolts of it for quilting pillows, bright pillows of red, yellow, blue, and green, corduroy. There is music in Great Grand's voice when she recalls good times came stitching corduroy, great fabric for quilting my designs, my way. I love that corduroy. Corduroy is the pants that like are really bumpy. They have the stripes on them that are bumpy. It's very sturdy fabric. An understanding will come later. My quilt top is pieced. I spread it on the bed. Great Grand nods her approval. Mama smiles. Grandma leads me to the frame on the porch. Knowing hands lay my quilt in place. How long will it take, I asked. Great Grand shushes me. Come, join us. She holds out her hand. Mama hums, by and by. Five women surround me at the quilting frame. And by the way, a quilting frame is when they take this, the quilt that has all the pieces put together, but there's no warm part inside the quilt. So they have to put kind of like a warm filling in it and then a, a backing on it. And it takes a lot of people to do that. It's a whole lot of sewing to do that. And that's the part that they do together as a group. All right, so there's five women surrounding me at the quilting frame, all stitching and pulling, singing the old spirituals. Same as always, except today I am part of the group. Coffee-colored, berry-stained, nimble fingers with clumsy thumbs stitching and pulling together in a slow and steady rhythm, patient hands that guide without force, teach without punishment, an old, old process, women stitching and pulling together. When will we finish, I ask? Grandma's eyes and the tilt of her head say, be patient. Quilting takes time, days, even weeks. Relax and enjoy. I stitch and pull and listen in the warm yellow glow of an afternoon sun on the blue quiet of my grandma's porch. The other women smile because they know. Finished. For several days I've been asking, are we finished yet? Grandma laughs and her cheeks rise in gentle mounds with this one last stitch. I bite the thread and knot it. Finished. I have made my first quilt, stitching and pulling with the others. But I'm not complete. There are hundreds of ideas in my head. Quilts that are about me, the place where I live, and the people who have been here for generations. Why are you crying, Grandma? I ask. An understanding will come, she says. By and by, I add. And once again, here's the quilt. The end. I hope you like that book and that story. Bye.